So I'm putting together a couple clips here. Um, most of you have been fooled by watching Making a Murder and thinking that Stephen Avery is innocent. Stephen Avery killed Teresa Hallback. This is a conversation with Jody the night of October 31st where Stephen says that he's inside of his trailer. Stephen is not inside his trailer. He's out by the garage or he's in the garage when this call happens. You're going to see and hear him constantly spitting is because he's got tobacco in his mouth. He's not going to be doing that inside the house. You're going to hear him say he's miss, he misses working out here. You're going to hear him say, oh, she's breathing again. And you're going to hear him say, oh, she's gone again. Okay, those statements that you're going to hear have nothing to do with the conversation he has with Jody. I believe at this time, Brennan is in the garage right, right now cleaning while he's talking on the phone with Jody. Remember, Brennan has, <clears throat> Brennan has bleach on his, on his jeans. And Stephen says that they cleaned up the garage weeks earlier. You're going to hear Stephen talk with his brother, Earl. Earl says, don't you remember you came up around 3.30, quarter to 4, and said the photographer never showed up? And Stephen denies that. And you're also going to hear Brendan say that he helped Stephen clean up in the garage. And everything that Brendan says fits perfectly into this timeline. I believe after Stephen gets off the phone with Jody is when they take Teresa and they put her in the fire. You watch and you decide. What did I say? I love all my lives. Is this the first time it rained? Mm, no. It rained before? Yeah. I don't know. But you were on it. I said, damn, I gotta hurry up and get to the front of the house. Oh. Yeah, it's up north, huh? Yeah. 
That's probably my... Uh, you got a picture like that at home, right? I think so, yeah. That's my friend's suit, my good shorts. Mm. Now she's gone again. I don't want a Dr. Pepper. Well? Yeah. Because yeah, that one tasted watered down. Mmm. Mm. Let's see, what time are we going? 20 after, huh? Yeah. I'll be there. I'll take you there. I'll call her tonight so she can talk to you. Mm. I'll leave it on her answer machine. <clears throat> it don't make a difference with time. Well, she's no tougher than her, because she was in there when it all happened. No. <clears throat> I wish she was out. Maybe this one happened, maybe. Huh? What they got against me? All the fucking evidence they got against you. Like what? Everything. And then you got Bob here. And, and Bob pulls in in the driveway room when we're having hunting that night. Yeah? Yeah. And then Chuck hollers to you and asks you and said, for time, for time, for came yet. And you said no. It's what? Like at 3.30 or quarter to four. How was it even there? Huh? How was it even up there? What do you mean? I was at home. No. I sure was. No, because I was in the loader. You guys were standing outside here. Not on Monday. Huh? Not on Monday. Yeah. No. I quit at 11 o'clock. Right. Yeah. But then you came back up here. At, at some time. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Because I was in there. Brandon said he, he was with Steven until 10.30 at night. I didn't come back up there to, it was... Well, from the county... Uh, so they got the pants that I wore that night. Oh, well... Actually, I'm, so you actually admitted to it or no? Not really. Oh. I admitted that there was a fire in there. Oh. That helps him into the, the pants and the wood and the, some tires and the cabinet on there. That's it. Yeah. 
fired to go down and then he told me to go home to get some sleep for school the next day. So did you get off? That'd be cool. Dude, I don't, I don't not like you or whatever you think. I don't 